Got me sparking and rushing mad like inside the dark. Call me no snatcher. Just a brother for the rapture. I hang lines, hold it on strong, hard to capture. Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a con and start killing. It's manifesting. The guards work like appliances. Dealing in my sight like a lot. What's going on guys, it's your boy Naruto Explain here. Today we're going to be going a bit further into Boruto chapter 68 and we're going to be looking at that impending moment where Ada meets Kawaki and in order to establish why I think this is going to happen, I'm going to be taking a separate approach than what I've done in the past and I'm actually going to be bringing up some of the elements from Robert Greene's book, The Art of Seduction. So if you've been around here for a while, then you know that I've been saying for a while now that I believe Kawaki's going to meet Ada and She's going to spin his head around faster than Sasuke's chakra levels tended to run out during the time slip arc. That one there was a violation. However, up until now, we didn't have a clear idea of how this would happen. But after a year of build up, I think we have a pretty straight line path to take towards this inevitable moment where Ada meets Kawaki. She allowed herself to be brought into Konoha because due to the failures of code in the past, this provided her with the best chance to grab Kawaki. That's why I don't believe that she had any type of resistance when Code began to pull her through the claw marks. Ada has said numerous times that the way that Kawaki is brought to her is just as important as the actual act of her meeting Kawaki in general. You could even argue that it's even more important than anything else, which is why she's been willing to go as far as to ask Code if it'd be possible for him to take Naruto off of his revenge hit list since Kawaki cares for Naruto so much and Ada has made it known in the past that if anything were to happen to Naruto, she wants there to be no way to connect her to Naruto's potential death because if anything happened to Naruto and Kawaki found out that she has something to do with it, Kawaki will hold it against her. She's clearly got a plan in place for seducing Kawaki to join her and it makes a lot of sense. Ada can't control Kawaki's heart. He's 80% of Susuke on genetic levels. So her ability to control hearts, it won't work on him, which means that if he were to fall for her, it would be literally because Kawaki fell in love with her or Ada was able to manipulate Kawaki into loving her, which doesn't seem that far-fetched, and I think that this is the likely thing. He's a boy who's never known true love up until recently. His own birth father beat him on a daily basis. He kept food from him, and he even sold him to a child trafficker in Jigen. Despite all of that, Kawaki was still loyal to his father. Jigen, on the other hand, acting under the direct control of Ishiki Otsutsuki, never viewed Kawaki as a son, but instead viewed him as a tool used to revive Ishiki once Ishiki ordered Jigen to feed himself to the Ten Tails, at which point Ishiki would revive into Kawaki. It was only until he was brought under the rooftop of Naruto that Kawaki began to learn what true love felt like, the closest thing to unconditional love that Kawaki had ever experienced before. It was something that he hadn't fully been able to understand because his entire life was essentially him being starved of this emotion, which has led to more than one person saying that he was obsessed with Naruto. From a craft perspective, Ada being here at the very moment when Naruto is about to speak to Kawaki and potentially change the relationship dynamic by addressing the elephant in the room that comes via Kawaki's obsession with Naruto and the fact that he killed Naruto's son, this wasn't done by mistake. The boy, starved of love, is about to face rejection for the first time from someone who he's grown to love more than anyone else, even more than his own life itself. It's going to shatter Kawaki, and waiting to pick up the piece is going to be Ada. Ada has shown herself to be a calculating character who isn't above using people or situations to her advantage. The fact that she was even able to come up to this conclusion of keeping Naruto alive might give her leverage to win over Kawaki as proof that for her, the end always justifies the means. However, Ada's now in the situation where her timing's perfect and she can start utilizing some of the art of seduction. Kawaki emotionally is going to be in a very vulnerable place. He's going to be hurt and hurt people tend to act irrationally. Left becomes right, right becomes left, down becomes up, up becomes down. Nothing makes sense because in that moment, they themselves don't make any sense. The reason why this is so important is if even if Ada can't take control of his emotions, she can still apply the principle of her powers the good old fashioned way, her feminine charm. To explain, you'll have to be familiar with the stance I took in a video several months ago where I discussed the battle between Sakura and Ada, where I said that I believe Ada's ability to control hearts works very similarly to the chemicals that come from feeling love, where you have the high levels of oxytocin and the dopamine and other chemicals that get released in an extreme level 
which is why she's able to seemingly control the hearts of others because of eye contact with her raises all those chemical levels to skyscraper levels. Ada isn't someone who would approach Kawaki without having already done her homework on her and she's a calculated manipulator. If Ada is able to time her meeting with Kawaki during the time of his confusion, it comes down to her being able to use that manipulative female charm to seduce Kawaki. However, this is where we have to clarify something. Seduction isn't just meant for romantic purposes. The art of seduction can be used to manipulate situations and manipulate people to get a desired outcome. Seduction broken down to its most basic level of understanding is being able to create an intense desire that has a distracting power on a person. You understand yourself and what traits you possess that make you seductive to somebody, and then you understand the target and how to create an opening that makes them lower their defenses so that they can be seduced. So let's be clear here. Ada is hot, long legs, pretty face, she's got hips. She's hot enough that every man who sees her is filling out child support papers if they're around her long enough. However, when we look at the nine different types of seducers that are identified by Robert Greene, the author of The 48 Laws of Power, as well as the author of The Art of Seduction, it's easy to pencil in her being as a siren, someone who's a symbol for pleasure. However, Ada also said that she is a monogamous person. It almost feels like it's the exact opposite for her. In my opinion, based off of her behavior in the past, Ada comes off like being more of a mixture of certain elements from what Robert Greene's The Art of Seduction defined as being a rake, which is typically something reserved for a man and being the ideal lover and being the charismatic seducer. The rape tends to appeal to the need that humans have for attention and desire while giving off the illusion that you will do everything for them. Ada stops just short of that last one. She sets very clear boundaries, shown by her quick reminder to Code that he better not think of feeding Kawaki to the Ten Tails once Boruto was killed. However, she stepped in to give Code that attention and that desire that he was lacking when Ishiki died. She strung him along as a way to get her way to Kawaki, all while allowing Code's desire for her to dangle in front of him like a carrot on a stick, which is why Code felt so hurt when Ada said that they had a business relationship and that they weren't partners. Now, the ideal lover is someone who takes advantage of the reality that all humans have shattered dreams. The ideal lover appeals to the belief that reality has disappointed all of us and crushed our dreams. The ideal lover presents a fantasy illusion to ensnare the person they aim to seduce with that illusion being everything the target seemingly thought they wanted. This is a very similar tactic to what Madara Uchiha did to Obito when he gave him the speech about winners and losers when Obito was being seduced by Madara. This is what I believe that Ada is about to do with Kawaki by waiting for Naruto to crush him during what Naruto thinks is a very well-intentioned but stern conversation. Ada has Senrigan, which allows her to see all things up into the past, up to the point of her birth, as well as everything that's going on in real time, which means she can see the darkest moments that Kawaki doesn't want to share with others or that Kawaki tries to forget. She can relate to him about having his body pump full of ninja tech on a cellular level, just like Amado did to her. She can speak to the emotions that he felt and she can craft a story that plays off of those emotions that Kawaki felt by weaving in half truths about her being ordered to be destroyed simply because she existed while omitting certain details. She has enough there to where she can manipulate Kawaki via the illusion of fantasy and being the one who truly understands him. It makes her a clear juxtaposition to Naruto who at a time would come across as not understanding Kawaki's emotions and actions during that time when he attacked Boruto. It's enough to put him in Ada's web and Kawaki will walk right into it. Finally, we have the charismatic seducer who carries an air of confidence and purpose and sexuality that is enough to make all those around them curious. Ada doesn't lack for confidence at all. She plays her cards close to the chest, which means that she has hidden agendas, which leads itself to a sense of where it does make sense. And as far as sexuality, that's a key part of her character. In fact, some would say that's the driving aspect of her character, which I disagree with, but I can see how people would say that. So that does make sense. But given where Kawaki is right now, the sexuality portion isn't something that's gonna be of interest to Kawaki. However, if she were able to play up the aspects of being the ideal lover in terms of that aspect of seduction, where you take advantage of that broken reality that Kawaki has, Ada will be able to play that long game and begin to shape his character beyond that of just 
wanting to do anything that's needed to protect Naruto. Naruto's manga told us best, when one person knows love, they eventually learn to know what it means to hate. Kawaki's love for Naruto could be on the verge of being manipulated by Ada to turn that into hate. It's hard to imagine that the boy who cares so much for Naruto eventually turns on him, but that's what makes moments like this hurt so much because you see the warm relationship and you think that there's no way this can take place. Then when you see that moment where everything changes, it's why you have those top 10 lists of people saying the top 10 anime betrayals because you typically see a pattern where betrayal doesn't seem like it's in the cards, but eventually it's something that happens and that's what makes those moments work. Ada is someone who, while she can be manipulative, I do believe she has enough depth to the character to be someone who walks that fine line of being seductive and manipulative while also seeking out a true connection for love, which is going to be her flaw. No real love can be built based off of those principles and the irony is that she will finally be with somebody who can fall in love with her in a sincere way but she messes it up due to her methods that she's gone about likely in turn making Kawaki be the one who betrays her later on down the line when he finally moves on from her. Seduction to the point is being able to read the room, make connections, embrace the electricity comes from the emotions that are being created. That is what a true seducer can do. For Ada, seducing Kawaki is the best way to drive that final wedge between Naruto and Kawaki. It's the way to rip off the band-aid for the bubbly good feel times that we've had with Kawaki being in Konoha. Wars have been fought over women. It's not crazy to think that someone who writes in the manner that Kishimoto does isn't down to make a woman's love and seduction be one of the things that drives a wedge between Kawaki and Konoha while also playing up other symbolic reasons. Power is what seduced Sasuke in part one of Naruto. In this case, it will be literal seduction that distorts Kawaki's vision. However, that's just my thoughts on this matter. I briefly touched on this in the past, but like I said before, I wanted to approach this topic from a different angle, looking at it from a deeper perspective via the art of seduction so as to give better light into the thinking process behind this. Obviously, the next few chapters are going to be the most crucial. For all we know, Kishimoto could have Ada right there in Konoha, and this becomes a whole misconnection type thing where it becomes a whole gag of Ada being so close to Kawaki but never getting able to actually meet him. Kishimoto is a troll. That's a good moment for us to range Kanji. I don't put it past him. However, I want to know from you guys what do you guys think? But as so always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't get to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.